Hi, this is Professor Moylan. Consumer behavior influences social class, and this definitely is an issue with marketing because social class can influence consumer decision making, and then marketers use social class in target marketing, and it can be used in advertising as well. So let's start by looking at how it influences consumer decision making. Remember our model, there are internal influences, there are situational influences, and there are social influences, and social class is just one of the social influences on decision making. Now let's go ahead and define social class. Social class is the overall rank or social standing of groups of people within a society according to factors such as family background, education, occupation, and income. Now, how do marketers sometimes use it uh, for uh, advertising? Well, status symbols such as luxury products allow people to flaunt their social classes and advertisers use that. It's often called aspirational marketing because people aspire to this. So this is use of a product uh, for someone who aspires to be in a certain social class. And you can see this in advertising all the time. Now here's an old, old ad. You could guess what car they came in. Obviously, you've got to be very, very upper crust to drive a Cadillac. Or, I guess, if you want to be upper crust, you can buy a Cadillac and kind of aspire to that. Uh, or how about this one? And this is, well, let's bring it to the present. Uh, this was just in Fortune magazine uh, last month. Uh, yeah, I want to fly on my own private uh, Gulfstream jet because uh, I'm a world-class traveler. I can't afford to do that, but I guess I'll get the watch and kind of pretend. You know, the watch uh, is, you know, linked at least psychically to, you know, flying first class. And it's no big surprise a lot of times these types of aspirational ads sometimes, and I'll stay in the watch category, sometimes use celebrities. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be more like uh, uh, him. Or, or you can be more like her. You, you just need to have the watch. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be for luxury, high-end, uh, upper class. It can be the cool social class. Certainly, uh, iPod certainly did this. Um, it can even go down to something as basic as coffee. Here's a great one by Starbucks. This is a Starbucks gift card. Well, what the heck is so cool about that? Starbucks gift card becomes a $450 status symbol. Uh, the coffee giant has taken the simple gift card to a new level with its $450 card made out of rose-tinted metal. You only get $400 in credit with the card. In other words, you pay $50 just to carry it in your wallet. They limited the number of these that were sold. And guess what happened? Yeah, they showed up on eBay reselling sometimes for as much as $2,000 because people wanted to have that cool uh, Starbucks card in there. Okay, social class. Uh, again, social class, a group of people in a society who are considered nearly equal in status or community esteem, who regularly socialize among themselves, both formally and informally, and who share behavioral norms. And we can put people in one of a few different social class buckets and divide those social class buckets by upper class, middle class, and lower class, and then within each of those have subclasses. And let's start at the top, at the very, very top, with the capitalist class, the top 1%, you know, people whose investment decisions shape the national economy, their income comes mostly from assets uh, earned or inherited, you know, and connections. Well, if you've been paying attention to the Occupy movement, you you know, you've heard about the the one percenters, yeah, the one percenters who, who control everything. Well, that's, that's where this comes from. Sticking with the upper classes, the upper middle class, and this is another 14%. These are upper level managers, professionals, owners of medium sized businesses, well to do stay at home homemakers, uh, and so on. Family income is well above the national average. So, so there's our upper classes uh, that are a total of about 15%.
Now let's move down to the middle classes. Uh, starting with the upper middle class, uh, middle level white collar, top level blue collar. Education is generally past the high school level. Uh, income is somewhat above the, lo the national average, but this is, is shrinking because of the loss of manufacturing jobs. And then the so-called working class, the working middle class, mid-level, blue-collar, lower-level, white-collar, income slightly below the national average, working in skilled or semi-skilled service jobs. So together, those give us the middle class, call it 65% of the uh, uh, population. And then we've got the so-called lower classes. There's often what's called the working poor. These are low-paid service workers, uh, some high school education below the mainstream and living standard. And then there's what's often referred to as the underclass, the very, very bottom. People not regularly employed depend primarily on a welfare system, a less education. Living standard is below the poverty line. And by the way, the poverty line, what is the poverty line? Well, uh, according to the U.S. government, the 2016 poverty guidelines, uh, just for one person, 11000 call it $11,900. So if you make less than that, just one person, you're below the poverty line. As the size of the household goes up, uh, the poverty level goes up. So for two people, 16000 For a family of four 24,000 is about the poverty line. The reason why uh, the differences are there is because multiple people in the same household, you don't have to have rent twice, you don't have to have heat twice, and so on. So if we just want to tally those up, uh, the uh, lower class, you know, the so-called bottom, you know, 20% or so, the upper class, together about 15%, the middle class, together about 65%, and then the, the lower classes. And so there you've got the total makeup. No big surprise here. Social class is largely identified by income, occupation, and education. And, and those are all very, very closely intertwined.